Welcome back, and it's time now for our press review. And joining me here in the studio, Ithar. Ithar, very good morning to you, Ithar. Good well, shall we start off with Allah Haram? Is that yeah? Sure, we yeah. always start off with Allah Haram. We keep that tradition going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Half a page of Allah Haram, and from it we read: Corrupt people fall. Atif Abid is banned from travel. Ahmed al-Maghrabi is under prosecution and a report was filed against Munir Thabit. A cooperation that took place uh, between Suzanne Mubarak and Hussein Salem to monopolize the transfer of economic and military aid to Egypt. Sodic and Beverly Hills are owned by Ala Mubarak and his father-in-law Magdi Rasikh. Al Saad accuses Al Adli's ex-wife of taking his villa. That's all. Front page. Yeah, I think it's very interesting how quickly, you know, um, state media is very different, the very different angle of how we're discussing things. None of this would have been discussed three weeks ago. So the idea that everyone who was accused of anything previously has now being brought to the front page, the khalas that they're uh, mm -hmm. airing out all the dirty laundry is very, uh, it's a good sign. It's a good sign of what media in Egypt will look like in the future. Um, so yeah, everyone's been expecting this for a while, so that there are concrete steps being taken to actually bring to justice people who have been over the past uh, couple of years or the past decade have been uh, always in the spotlight of being using public funds or, or, or being accused of crimes, these kind of crimes. Okay, so uh, also, also still with al uh, uh, from it we read, hundreds of policemen demanded that former Minister of Interior Habib al-Adli be brought to justice along with those who have caused the bloodshed that killed Egyptian youths and members of the police force. Policemen ask for forgiveness and the people are conservative. How do you think we're going to be able to rebuild that that trust, if you will. I think it's going to take some time, um, especially with Habib al-Adli. You know, this has been from the very beginning when this began three weeks ago. That's been the, consistently that people have been calling that he has to be brought to justice. The idea that the actual police have also joined in, especially, and yesterday, you know, they were protesting, calling for pay raises, and a lot of people were thinking that's very ironic. You know, for the last three weeks, you've been the ones standing against us, and now you're protesting with us, kind of riding the wave, as is everyone striking now, in order to ask for your demands, and they got their 100% pay raise. Mm -hmm. But in, in terms of trust, I think it'll take a long time to build because I think during this past three weeks, um, the thing that's been the most clear is that people don't trust promises anymore. Mm -hmm. Even though our ex-president, you know, even going up and saying, these are our promises, I will change, these are the forms, people didn't trust the words anymore. Even with the military, you know, who have been, we, even with all the things, you know, the military and the people, they're one hand, and we respect our military, greeting them with, with you know, with cheers and everything. People still are worried because there's been no credibility or mm -hmm. a lot of things have been promised in, in recent history, mm -hmm. but things are just not being applied. So it will take some time, but the best way for it to be regained is if these promises are actually met, the timetable kept to. Let me ask you still in, in relation to, to this topic, do you think it's just Habib al Do you think other people need no. to be brought in uh, for questioning? A lot of people, you know, I don't know if you watched yesterday Ahmad Aiz on Arabi, a lot of people were very, very furious at the interview. But I meant yeah, rather of, it, uh, of the police, the, the lower ranking. Um, um, you know, there are a lot of people who've been calling for, you know, no, we have to forgive. These were people doing their jobs. A lot of them were actually with you uh, in, in spirit, if not in actions. There have been a lot of pictures of actual policemen and generals leaving their ranks to actually join the protesters. Um, so there's that. But at the same time, I don't think uh, there will be a mass, you know, people burnt down all the police stations. There's obviously a lot of anger towards the police in Egypt with our, with our history. Um, so it is very possible, it will begin with Adli, but it is very possible that people will, especially if things continue on in this vein, they will call for more and more. We have to prosecute everyone who, was, who has been in history been to, to be against the people. Whether that act that's actually possible or not considering the size right. of the numbers, uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to see about okay, that. Okay, well, uh, still with Al Haram newspaper, uh, communique number five, the army spokesman said that the strikes at this delicate time lead to negative results, uh, adding that it harms both security and economic production. How do you how do you view that ki that community? First of all, I think it's very surprising that we live in an age where everyone's waiting for the army, the next army coming. It's very strange to think of, but you know it, it is a very legitimate concern. As you can see, Egypt kind of you know it began with Tunis, but then we were the ones who we've really set a wave across the world. You know, people are protesting in like Italy and Greece, which are countries. You know, what are you Bahrain, Bahrain, Yemen, Algeria, um, and peaceful protests. We've showed that it it does bring results. 
but the reality is, um, you know, I was in taxi cab yesterday, and he's like, everyone now who's annoyed at his boss for, I don't know, having cold coffee is going to strike. Everyone does have legitimate concerns. There are a lot of things that need to be fixed in terms of pay raises, wage, you know, uh, insurance, everything. But if everyone now strikes at the same time, you're just putting the country more into a turmoil. We've economically, you know, our stock market, since mm -hmm. January 27th, we're losing a lot. Tourism, hotels now, you know, the hotel rooms cost like 200 Egyptian pounds, four seasons mm -hmm. on the Nile. Um, this, this isn't the way to actually fix things. We need to kind of take a step back, or at least in my opinion, let the army, let us see if the promises will be delivered right. upon. And we've proved that now if hmm. things aren't, we will, people right. will go back to the right. streets. So people protest. need to really basically to have a, take a breather. To take a breather, exactly. And, and, and realize that just because you're calling for the strikes and you're being allowed to strike and, you're, and your demands are legitimate doesn't mean that it's possible at this present time when we have to deal, people strike because of political. They had the political kind of angle. But in terms of if you're calling for other things now, there are a lot of things wrong. We can't, nothing, nothing will be, not everything will be able to satisfy it right now. All right, okay. Mm. Uh, still with Al Ahram, and we're from, from it we read, Gaudat al Malt says that the percentage of poverty rose and reached 61%. The economic achievements were not felt by most of the people due to monopoly and cheating. Yeah, I think this has been, you know, for Egypt, uh, this has been the case for a very long time, you know, that society is becoming very polarized, rich were becoming richer, poor were becoming poorer. You already had 40% of people under the poverty line, and you went poverty line at $2 a day. Um, but I don't think now this will be as easy to get away with in terms of monopoly. People will be a lot more stringy at the government. You know, this idea that the political elite and the social elite were kind of intertwined mm -hmm. will not be tolerated anymore simply because and our, our new prime minister, you know, made this very clear in all his addresses. Um, that this idea, even if it is true, there will be consequences, that it won't, people, it cannot be allowed to continue in this vein because simply the people will not stand for it Do anymore. you think we need a policy of minimum wage? Well, you know, this is a discussion that's been revolving around for a lot of people, and you know, the arguments against it before are very clear. If we have a minimum wage, you'll have inflation, simply because of the laws of demand and supply. Um, what I do think is that definitely there, there has to be a kind of system for wages. You know, I've, even if I've been reporting on it for years, you know, doctors and teachers making, you know, 300 Egyptian pounds a month, and then the system of well, having private classes. Exactly, and, and then it exactly. actually ruins. It actually, actually ruins right. this, the system because then people have to go to private clinics or private doctors or private lessons. So definitely the wage system has to be modified in a way. Whether the idea of having a minimum wage of 1,000 Egyptian pounds is, is the way to it has to be studied more. Econo economists will be more qualified than me to discuss this. But there's no doubt that something has to change because this way is not sustainable, this way of living. Right. And finally, from al Haram and still with page one, uh, we read uh, Egypt's ambassador to Washington says that former President Hosni Mubarak's health is a critical, in critical condition. Yeah, I, so far there's been a lot of rumors going around, you know, the President's sons have been fighting, he's sick, he's in Sharm el-Sheikh, he's in Dubai, he's been everywhere. Um, but right now, I don't think this has been confirmed, even though it's been sent. It hasn't been confirmed anywhere yet. Okay. Um. Uh, let's gonna move on to al Shuru. From it, we read also from page one, the Egyptian revolutionary cyber activists say they are continuing their work. Uh, they will follow up on fulfilling their demands, the first of which is ending the emergency law. How important is it right now at this stage that this law um, to be it's, it's whole well, the thing you know, there's been a lot of discussion. You know, politically, I'm not the most, but there's been a lot of discussion since the constitution has been suspended. Does the emergency law really figure that much anymore? And it's, it's superseded by military rule, which we are in now, which is actually more stringent in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think the call for and and there's been promises that it will be lifted or be stopped once things calm down a little. But I don't think out of all the concerns or all of the legitimate uh, needs that people have been asking for, that the emergency law at this stage is the number one. Because since we're under military it doesn't really make a difference. Focus on the other things that we're talking, like you just discussed, minimum wage or political participation or bringing to trial people who do need to be trial right. is the more important. But, you know, also another thing to say, the cyber activists who've been continuing, there's been a lot of discussion, you've been monitoring mm -hmm. social media, um, people who are saying that, you know, we're still staying, even with the military, there's been, you know, there's discontent and Tahrir just, obviously now when I was coming, it's completely, uh, completely empty. Um, but uh, people who were saying, you know, that we need to see legitimate change being happen or else we'll just
come straight back. Right, okay. But I think, like, like we said, there needs to be a chance for them... The military to actually... For, yeah, take a chance to actually modify everything and uh, see how things go from there. Yeah. Okay, from, and still with us, Shilu, we're reading uh, about the new strikes that are taking place and the army has demanded protesters to return to their work. They also said that the army calls on citizens and professional unions and the labor unions to play their role fully. How important is it that the unions actually start taking action um, with regards to, A, the protests and, again, maybe, like, maybe hearing grievances? The unions have always been very powerful in terms of mobilizing and even... Um, a week ago when things were still very at tension, the idea that the labor unions have started calling out 8,000 people from the oil sector actually started gathering their people was very, towards the previous regime, was extremely worrying because of the idea that the protests were, had no leader, right? You had all these people mm. out of frustration. But the idea of having a legitimate leader, which is the union, gathering everyone and causing them to strike is actually could be more cause for worry because that's organized and that mm. actually gives more legitimacy to the demands. Um, so the unions are in a position of power whether to continue in these strikes or not. But like we were saying, these strikes right now, you know, if you're watching even state TV, non-state TV, people calling, you know, very legitimate concerns they've been calling for for years. We want wages, we want minimum wage, we want insurance, we want holidays. We don't want to be transferred without, and this is the police, you know, we don't want to be transferred from Alexandria to Cairo. Um, but whether now is the best time, you know, I, this, is, this is the problem. What, what shall we focus on? We don't want to be, you know, have a lot of concerns. If you're not focusing on one thing, you won't be good. You have, need to specialize and focus on the political, which is, which is the concern right now, before we start thinking of all the economic and all the social and other things. Okay. Uh, also, still with us, 30,000 police officers denounce Aladni's crimes. We've already discussed that. Yeah. Let's move on to the next topic, the central bank prevented money smuggling in the recent days. An official in the bank says that the foreign transfers were 70% less than expected. Yeah, um, but that's also to be expected, you know, because of everyone now is worried, you know, a lot of people in terms of how they you know they're considering money or dollars or how they're dealing with, people are still very frightened. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of uncertainty because regardless of how the past 30 years, regardless of how corrupt or what problems they were, it was more or less, you know, stable, consistent. People knew what to expect, you know, mm -hmm. oh, okay, we're, we're living under an undemocratic, I get 300 pounds, that's not fair, but I still know that I have that. So there's still a lot of uncertainty, but hopefully as time goes on, people will start to, to, to accommodate and to normalize that this becomes the situation. Right, okay. And finally, uh, a final topic from Shul reads, the Muslim Brotherhood demands six immediate procedures and a timetable for the demands. Yeah, the Muslim Brotherhood has been a very, uh, very interesting to watch in these past three weeks because, you know, there, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, they're all, the Muslim Brotherhood is behind everything. Oh, no, the Muslim Brotherhood didn't play any role at all. Um, so the idea that they're calling for demands, I don't know how much legitimacy they have as of yet now or how much, you know, this will be taken. Oh, the Muslim Brotherhood is demanding. It means we have to actually, uh, I, I would actually say that the demands of the youth or the January 25th youth mm -hmm. or the cyber activists actually hold more weight and credibility now, especially with, you know, the face of what Ghanim behind mm -hmm. it, than actually the Muslim Brotherhood, what they're calling but, for. But do you think they can probably, like, uh, all these groups sit down together and kind of form, like, one one set of demands instead of having like all these little uh, these little splinter groups if yeah. you will it will give it more strength and mm -hmm. more weight if that's possible if the opposition groups are able to unify but again because our political system in, in recent history didn't really have this space or this freedom for people you know to gather freely to create these kind of demands it was very stifled very suffocated uh, so it will take us time before the political scene in Egypt is really you know rich and thriving and we have people who are not just uh, uh, who, are, who aren't just charismatic, but people who are qualified and who really understand how it works to, to create demand and to create a system and to work. So it will take time, maybe, I think, Do you think the six, the, the six month period, that, do you think that's feasible within that time frame? You never know, you know. Uh, we said three weeks. <laughs> in three weeks, look what happened in three weeks. Before right. that, we would have said it could have never happened. Um, so it is very possible, you know. We've showed, I think, Egyptians that once they got up and they said this is what we want, that they managed to do incredible things. So it is very possible in six months.